Hey y'all, um, that was kind of southern on it. Um, hope you guys are having a great week. I, uh, I always question, like, you know, all the other, a lot of the other knife YouTubers have, like, intros that they consistently keep throughout all their videos, and I, I don't know, I've been kind of going back and forth with, like, do I want to do, like, hey y'all, but I'm not from the south, or, like, hey y'all, or how's everybody doing, or whatever, but anyway, so that's where that came from. So I've been meaning to do this video for a few weeks now. It's regarding not the Para 3 Lightweight, because I already talked about that, but specifically the Patina on this version specifically. And I really need to get used to this, the stand on this um, tripod. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about the Patina on this. You can see it has some nice dark spots. It has some nice shades of blue, and it has a very apparent line down by the blade edge where some nail polish was present. So, if you guys have ever patinaed a knife before, you probably know what I'm talking about with the nail polish, but if you haven't, my intention is to kind of explain the whole process in this video in case you guys want to pursue this yourselves. So... This pair of three, as I probably talked about in my last video, I picked up from uh, Kyle Mason on Instagram. And this is a lightweight version, and specifically the GP Knives exclusive version in Rex 45. Um, so you can see their CPM Rex 45. These things come in all kinds of variations, blade seals, handle materials, or handle material colors, I should say. Because um, all the lightweights use this same... FRN scale material that Spyderco also uses on their Endura line, their Delica line, their Endella line. I don't, they have so many now, I, I lose track of those. But yeah, so they all share that same blade handle material. And <clears throat> with this being Rex 45, I wanted to try putting a patina on it because I've never done it before. And I also didn't want to worry about rust because even though I do have a decent amount of knives and I do rotate a lot, I do still carry my knives and I do use them, you know, for, for whatever tasks I, I need to. So I wanted to have that, that protection on the blade steel to help prevent rust because, you know, you can keep it oiled and everything, but it's still there's still a chance that some spot rust can and then probably will develop or the knife, the knife blade is going to patina anyway. So maybe I should back up a little bit. A patina is basically a reaction of the knife's, um, let us say steel with the oxygen to form, I'll just call it a layer on, on the top of the steel. So there's a reaction that occurs and, and a layer forms on the top of the steel and that's what you see as the patina so depending on what reaction is occurring you either get black rust which you see here so like this this spot here um, these two spots here or you get red rust <clears throat> black rust is considered favorable that's what you want when you patina a knife and that's what's going to help protect the steel from red rust which is definitely not what you want so red rust, it actually creates, voids are created in the steel and it affects the structural integrity of the knife blade. Whereas with the black rust, it simply forms more of a protective coating on the top of the steel that helps prevent red rust from forming. So to do that, it's actually pretty simple. And the stuff you need, you can find most of it around the house. You can use vinegar, um, you can use a mustard, like a yellow mustard or a brown mustard. You can use, I think I've seen guys use some acids, but I, I wouldn't recommend that because those can be a little tricky to get. They're, they're a little more regulated, um, <clears throat> a little more risk there. But, you know, do some, do a little bit of Googling. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of stuff you can use. And also check out um, information on black rust versus red rust. It's actually pretty interesting. Um, 
I always, I didn't know there was actually, a, I didn't know there was a difference until I started looking into doing this. So, yeah, so the, the what you see here is is what you would consider black rust. And you can see it's, it's black in some places. But depending on what you use to patina the steel, how long you leave it on, the, the number of iterations you do, um, you can also get this very nice looking blue um, hue, I guess is the right word for that. And, you know, again, just do a search or, or check out the Facebook groups for other knife, knife blades that people have patinaed. And you'll kind of see that you can get a, a huge number of different uh, appearances on knife blades. It's pretty cool. But basically what I did is I took yellow mustard and I rubbed it. I disassembled the knife first. And this is where the, the nail polish comes in. I don't want to forget that. So you'll want to coat the knife blade edge edges with nail polish <clears throat> and the reason being is if the patina occurs on the blade edge it could affect the sharpness of the knife so it's just kind of to preserve that which is the same for any um like if you have a a zdp 189 laminate the the blade edge is not going to have whatever jacketed steel is present it's not going to be on the blade edge because the blade edge is is the hardened or the, the very hard steel. So it's, it's sort of the same idea here. And then you'll also want to put nail polish around the pivot area, um, the detent ball track, depending on what, whatever knife you're, you're patina, patinaing, patinaing. So that's, that's another consideration. So disassemble the knife, put the nail polish on the blade edges and around the pivot and around the detent track. And that'll ensure that when you reassemble it, you still have a smooth knife with the action that you that you had when you first purchased it. <clears throat> so then what I did, and, and this is kind of where the variance comes in, I coated the blade entirely in the yellow mustard. And I think the first round, I let it sit for um, uh, maybe four hours. And you know, again, this, this varies widely. You can let it sit for four hours. You can let it sit for 12 hours. Um, you can let it sit for an hour. <clears throat> but the key to getting the different appearances on the blade of the patina is to vary the amount you put on the areas of the knife blade you put the mustard on, how thick it's applied, and then the frequency at which you do it. So maybe Maybe you want to apply the mustard in a in a very in a variable pattern, and let it sit for an hour, and then repeat that process, and just do it over and over and over until you get <clears throat> I don't know whatever kind of a patina you're desiring. It's just going to vary with with all those factors. So, but for mine, um, I was trying to get a dark appearance because you can get these pretty dark, pretty black. I was trying to get it dark, so I. I cut it down from four hours um, to one hour. So I reapplied, waited an hour, and then cleaned it off. And you just apply the mustard and just let it sit in the air. That's how the reaction occurs. So I, let, I did that, I think, four or five times maybe. And then the last time I applied it, and I, I let it sit overnight for around 10 hours and removed it. And it didn't really seem to be getting um, much blacker and I wasn't, I kind of decided that I didn't care that much about getting it super dark. What I wanted more was just the, the look of a patina. I didn't really care specifically what it looked like. I just wanted that patina appearance. You can see here, it, it came out pretty nicely. I mean, it's, it's definitely not consistent, but when you, when you do this to a knife blade, <clears throat> you're not really looking for consistency. At least I don't, I'm assuming most people aren't. So I got a couple of dark spots there. Let's see if it'll focus. And I have some of the blue hue on this side. There's there are a few other colors up here. And that's that's kind of what Rex 45 specifically is known for doing when you patina it, is it it comes out with all these really cool colors. You can see a little bit of red there. And then on this side, as I kind of showed, you get the blue hues up there at the top toward the spine. And then you have some of the blacker 
shades down here by the, the pivot. But yeah, that's basically all you do. You find some mustard or some vinegar, and then you either let the blade soak in the vinegar for a designated number of time periods or coat it in mustard, let it sit there for, you know, the same number of time periods. And then you um, remove it from whatever medium you're using, remove the nail polish, which can be done with like an alcohol or an acetone. And yeah, reassemble the knife and, and uh, check out what you got. So it's a pretty cool process and I, it's being an engineer, it's kind of, it was kind of difficult for me because I wanted a very standardized process, but even doing some research and stuff, it, it varies widely with just by whoever's doing it, whatever you want. I mean, if you want a darker patina, you're going to have to do the process more times, um, probably apply a heavier coating or a more variable coating of the medium. And it's just going to take longer. But if you just want something like this, I think this took maybe a day and a half in total, um, five or six iterations of just applying the mustard, letting it sit, removing it, applying it again, letting it sit. <clears throat> but remember again, when before you apply anything or soak it in vinegar or, or do anything, make sure to put the nail polish on the blade edge on both sides. You can see there the line kind of runs where it was and then also put it around the, the pivot and the detent track. So anyway, that's just kind of my, my take on the patina process, sort of what I did and just some tips if you guys, if you guys want to do it. Um, really there's not a, a wrong way to do it. Just be careful to not let water become a medium or, or a factor in any of your, your process because then you'll start getting red rust, which you do not want. So yeah, just choose something that's, that's fairly acidic and just kind of go from there. Um, so if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to leave those in the comments. Please uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to my channel and we'll look forward to talking to you guys in the next one. We'll see ya.